In this video, we'll introduce the term capital cost allowance, and we will introduce the system that's used in Canada for depreciation and how we treat depreciation, and specifically, we'll deal with something that is called the half-year rule, and that is not something that we've covered thus far in the course, but it is something we need to know if we're calculating depreciation uh, in Canada. By way of introduction, the first thing I'd like to do is just briefly discuss some terms. Um, there are general terms that we've used so far in the course to discuss depreciation and assets, um, book value, these kinds of things. I'd like to translate those terms into what's used in Canada specifically for what we call the capital cost allowance system. So um, the first thing I'd like to do, just I'll, I'll write down, let's say what we call um, general terms. And these would be the terms that we've used so far in the course. And then I'd like to sort of map those to, um, let's say, let's call them the um, uh, Canadian, Canadian tax terms. So, so in general terms, really, we've spoken about assets. And we've talked about assets as being basically anything that we buy and continue to own. Um, in Canadian tax terminology, we usually use the word property. Another term that we use uh, and really this is a, the, the big one, is we've, we've spoken in general about depreciation. And when I say depreciation, I'm really talking about the depreciation amount that occurs within a certain calendar year. So really it's the depreciation expense that I'm referring to. And in Canadian tax terms, our depreciation expense, we refer to that as capital cost allowance. And perhaps you can remember this, uh, especially using the word allowance, and that is you are only allowed, according to taxation rules, to claim a certain amount of expense, a certain amount of depreciation expense within each calendar year. And we'll get to that in some of the examples that we do in this course. So capital cost allowance is what we mean, when, um, uh, is what uh, relates to the depreciation expense that we've used uh, so far in calculating straight line or declining balance. So this new term, don't be alarmed by it, it really just means this. We also speak about something called the cost basis. And the cost basis for an asset is really what we paid for that asset. And in tax terms, we really just refer to that as the capital cost. The other thing that we've mentioned in general accounting and depreciation terms is something called book value. And in tax terms in Canada, book value, we call something a bit strange, apparently, but uh, you'll understand hopefully in a few moments why this is. We call this the undepreciated capital cost. Okay, so book value is called undepreciated capital cost. And then the last term I wanted to, to discuss is salvage value. And in Canadian tax terms, we refer to salvage value as proceeds from disposition. So, um, what I think you should do is just take a moment, make sure that you understand that each of these sort of Canadian-specific tax terms 
um, is understandable in general terms as these items that we've already talked about uh, in the course. So at this point, uh, we'll do a problem. So I'd encourage you to take a moment, pause the video, uh, read the problem, and when you're ready to see the solution, restart the video. So in this problem, uh, we're given the scenario of, um, of a car. And we're told that uh, this is a company. The company wants to purchase a car, and the purchase price is $20,000. We're also told that this car falls into a capital cost allowance asset class that gives it a depreciation rate of 20%. And we're also told that the corporate tax rate for the company is 40%. So the question asks, what is the tax savings in the first year when the company proceeds with the purchase of this asset. Well, um, the actual amount of depreciation the company is allowed to claim as an expense, we'll call it, let's call it its new name. So in, rather than depreciation, we'll call it the Canadian term, which is capital cost allowance. And I'll calculate the capital cost allowance or depreciation according to the declining balance method with a twist. So I start with my $20,000 and then I will multiply, simply multiply it by the depreciation rate, 20%. So I'm allowed to decrease the value of the 20,000 by the depreciation rate. Recall when we calculated book value, we used one minus D, right? So instead of using 0.2, I would use 0.8 to find my remaining, my book value at the end of year one. In the new terminology, this will be called the undepreciated capital cost. We used to call it book value. But then I'll do something a bit unusual, and that is I'll multiply by one half. And in Canada, I'll just put this in. In Canada, we have something called the half year rule. And the half-year rule means that when a company purchases an asset in the calendar year in which the purchase is made, they're only allowed to claim half of the allowable depreciation expense or capital cost allowance. And this is something we call the half-year rule. Oops. Okay, so our half-year rule is in the calendar year the purchase is made, we're only allowed to claim half the depreciation expense. So if we go ahead and, and do this calculation, we find that we're allowed to claim $2,000 as our um, capital cost allowance. Now the $2,000 will reduce our taxable income. If we reduce our taxable income by $2,000, then as the question asks, how much tax do we save? We can simply take the $2,000, multiply by the tax rate, and calculate that, in fact, this company in the first year will save $800 in tax as a result of the purchase of this equipment, as a result of the amount of capital cost allowance they can claim as an expense. So, so this is really the answer to the first part of the question. The question also asks, what is the undepreciated capital cost at the end of year one? So remember, we have to still track that idea of book value. Well, we had a starting value of the asset at time t equal to zero of $20,000. We calculated that we were allowed to claim um, an ex a depreciation expense of $2,000. So we can calculate at the end of year one, our undepreciated capital cost, we typically use UCC for that, is simply our 20,000 minus our 2,000. That's what we claimed in year one. So we end up with an undepreciated capital cost of 18,000 at the end of year one. 
this will be the beginning value of the asset, the beginning book value at the beginning of year two, and we'll calculate the allowable depreciation in year two using the 18,000 and our depreciation rate. In year two, we don't need the one half, so our depreciation expense in year two will simply be 18,000 times 0.2. So in this example, we introduced the idea of the Canadian system of capital cost allowance and reviewed some terminology that's specific to our system here in Canada. And then we did a simple example where we uh, introduced the idea of the half year rule um, and then also identified that the amount of tax savings that occur as a result of this capital cost allowance or depreciation expense.